Hello everybody and welcome to Lois and Morgana Davidson Art. It's Morgana here and in today's video I'll be sharing how to paint this majestic white egret against this simple, minimalistic yet beautiful still water backdrop using watercolour. This is the reference photo that inspired this particular painting. You can find this photograph and download it for free from the uh, image hosting website pixabay.com. After I had drawn the outline of the bird using HP pencil, I laid down some masking fluid to protect it from the first wash of paint. What I'm doing here is fully wetting the top two thirds of my paper and I'm using my large two inch wash brush to do this nice and quickly. So I'm thoroughly wetting the top two thirds and then I'm going to loosely wet the bottom layer, leaving some patches of dry paper because we want to do a little bit of dry brush uh, just to show the glint of light on the water that our bird is standing in. The paper that I'm using for this is a quarter imperial sheet of hot press Saunders Waterford, weight 140 pounds. I'll put a full list of everything that I'm using in the video description as per usual. And as you can see, this is a really simple background and it's really fun to do. All you need is some Payne's Grey and I'm painting a graduated wash, bringing the color strongly in the middle and paler up at the top and then doing some dry brush down below. You can see here on this lower third, there's lots of streaks of unpainted paper where I only loosely wet the paper first. And it's actually worked really beautifully to uh, introduce the sense of uh, differentiation between the water that the bird's standing in and the gray sky behind, despite the fact that we are using the same color for both. And now with my flat brush, I'm just adding some really simple detail, just a few really loose uh, horizontal and diagonal strokes. And this just adds a little bit of movement and texture into this lower area and gives us that impression of some swirling water. If you have any harsh lines, you can do what I did and just blend them out with a damp, clean mop brush, a nice soft one. And then to just add a tiny amount of detail, I'm sprinkling a very small amount of salt across that top uh, two third area of the paper. And that's it. I'm going to leave it to dry now. But before I do that, I'm going to carefully just dab out any excess paint or water that has pulled on top of this uh, masking fluid here. It's quite a large area of masking fluid, so I'm able to lift it out quite nicely using some clean tissue. Of course, you can sort of ball it up to a point to get into those difficult areas. This isn't a vital step, but it does help your masking fluid to lift off really nice and cleanly uh, once everything's a bit dry later on. This is a uh, in progress photo. You can see here that that salt is beginning to work around the wings of the bird. This was about five minutes in. And this is how the wash dried. So everything is fully dry. I've brushed off the salt and I'm ever so happy with these delicate little blooms. I think they look absolutely lovely. So now uh, it's completely dry. I'm going to remove the masking fluid. So you can do this by simply rubbing at it with your finger or uh, a clean eraser, or I'm using a tool called a rubber cement pickup, uh, which as you can see, removes the masking fluid uh, really nicely and neatly as well. Once the masking fluid is removed, you can see we're back to some lovely white paper, which is really handy for when you're painting a white bird because it means that most of the work is already done. I'm going to be painting in some detail wet and wet. So you can see here, I'm using a small round brush to uh, cover the uh, sort of neck and head area with clean water, bringing it down into the body. And now using a little bit more Payne's Gray but really, really light paint spray. You can see it's watered down almost to nothing to just introduce a little bit of shading and shadow to uh, bring out the bend in the bird's neck and give a little bit of shape uh, and structure to the bird's body 
in the center here. You really don't need much paint for this. Uh, Payne's Grey can be such a strong color, but it also can dilute down to such a beautiful misty tone. And you can see here that I'm just using more clear water to just bring the color down and then add a bit more extra color. You can see that's a little bit dark, so I'm going to blend it out using more clean water and just get some shading uh, in and around the tail and the body here. Now using the same technique but a slightly larger brush, I'm going to put some clean water along this space in the wing. This is a size 10 mop. And again, just clean water to start with so I can paint wet and wet. And then just a little bit of Payne's Grey, again to help some definition and shading. So far this has been a very monochromatic um, painting using only one colour. I promise you there is another couple of colours coming shortly. However, um, I think it could be a very stylish piece if you wanted to uh, simply stick with using Payne's Grey for everything and just see if you could do a one colour painting. You know, I'm almost annoyed that I didn't think of that while I was painting this. I may try another one in that style. You can see here I'm adding in some darker colour to create a deeper shadow at the point where the wing meets the body and then I'm just going to blend that out so it sort of blends naturally down to the uh, towards the feather detail at the bottom of the wing. And now once you've done that, once you've got a nice sort of even colour, you can come in with a smaller brush and begin to add a little bit of definition for some feathers. And I like using my round size 4 for this. It's a, a perfect size for this sort of size of bird and size of painting, I think. And this is, again, still working wet and wet, so you have to be quite quick. Um, but just adding these little strokes of deeper colour, disappearing into that sort of area about two thirds of the way up the wing. Uh, and this is just giving that illusion of those sort of fan of spread out wing feathers without having to sit there and painstakingly paint in each and every one really, really carefully uh, with a fine brush. This is a really sort of nice, loose, easy, quick way uh, to paint a bird. And once you're happy with one win, you can of course move on to the other. Uh, being right-handed, I suspect I should have done it the other way around, i.e. starting with the left wing and working my way along to the right. But hindsight is so often 2020, so that's what I would recommend for uh, right-handed folks. Or if you are left-handed, of course, uh, do it the way that I've just done it, uh, just to avoid smudging. Or of course, you could wait for one wing to fully dry before you start on the other. I am impatient, and so I did not wait. But you can see I'm using exactly the same technique here uh, with just adding some clean water down first and then laying down some Payne's Grey shading just across the majority of the wing area. And if you do happen to put in your colour a little bit too dark, then you can always use a clean piece of tissue or kitchen towel to quickly uh, lift the colour out again. Here you can see I've now completed the left wing and the uh, feather detailing in exactly the same way as I just demonstrated on the right wing using my small round brush. And at this point now with both wings fully painted, I find that I often need to go back to certain areas of the bird's body and add a little bit more shading. You can see I have put in a little bit more just around the legs and tail and now I'm using my large brush to add a bit more shadow to the bird's body. I find that once you've got the wings in they help to sort of contextualize everything and help you to uh, see exactly where the shadows should lie in terms of where the light is hitting the bird and where of course some shade is going to be cast by the shape of the wing. So you can see I'm just making a couple of adjustments here. 
and now I switch to a small brush and I'm painting in the beak of the bird just using a mix of burnt sienna and raw sienna which gives you this lovely sort of soft uh, golden toned colour. And I'm using plenty of water again with uh, this paint here because I want a relatively smooth transition between this sort of darker colour for the beak and of course going into the lighter area of feathers around the bird's head. There's of course a slightly darker area, sort of an area of transition between the beak and the eye which um, I'm going to be using a little bit more Payne's Grey for. And here you can see just using my small brush to just pull the uh, colour up from around the beak with a little bit of Payne's Grey and add that transitional area. And here I'm using some neutral tint to colour in the bird's legs. You don't have to use neutral tint of course, use whichever dark colour suits your painting best but um, I find this a nice alternative to more Payne's Grey or uh, black which can sometimes be a little harsh. And now the uh, beak and the eye area has dried, you can see here I'm using a really fine brush and some more neutral tint to just paint the eye in and all I'm doing is just giving a careful little dot um, for the pupil to make sure that he is looking forward. Now that is our beautiful bird complete, we just need to add a couple of final details. So I'm using my sword liner brush and some more neutral tint to draw in a handful of scraggly reeds up and around the bird. And you can do as many or as few as you like. You can see I've added some over here on the left pet side of the paper as well. Uh, and once you're happy with your reeds, um, a good trick is to water down the paint that you are using. So I'm using some watered down neutral tint here. And just use your brush to draw some really sort of soft um, wiggly lines leading down from your reeds just to create some really simple reflections in the water. You can of course use um, a rigger brush for this would be really good or uh, just a, a regular round brush would also work. I like using the, um, the liner brush, my sword liner, because it has great flexibility um, and it gives those lovely sort of almost organic shapes of the ripples in the water really quite nicely. You can see I've done those ones on the left there. I'm really pleased with how they look. So I'm just going to carry on and uh, create very similar shapes here on the right. You do just need to make sure, of course, that you balance your reflections and make sure they're sort of pointing the right way. So like in this case here, you can see my reeds are quite directional. The sort of the tops are facing right. So of course I want to bring the reflections down and lean them towards the right as well. And now for the final part of this painting, we need to, of course, add in a bit of reflection for the bird. So again, I'm using really pale neutral tint, keeping it slightly darker to reflect the legs. But of course, our bird is a pale colour, so I'm using um, the brush to sort of pull a hint of reflection down into this patch of darker water that I've got here. And that is just enough to give the hint of a reflection without it looking too heavy. And so here it is, the finished painting. Thank you everybody for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. I really enjoyed the challenge of creating this painting using such a limited palette, but I think um, Payne's Grey was definitely our hero colour today. Um, it was the, um, the Windsor & Newton Professionals brand of watercolour paint that I used for those of you who are interested. Um, if you'd like to see more videos like this, then please do uh, consider signing up to my Patreon page, which you can find by following the link in the video description below to see more uh, sort of bird tutorials uh, such as this. 
Um, but that's all from me today. Uh, thank you again everybody for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day and I wish you very happy painting.